Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm going to be hosting actually what was recorded as an interview here with uh, Alex Jones and retired Marine Colonel Pete Martino. Now, if you remember about a year ago, they had a situation in Concord, New Hampshire, where Homeland Security was giving about a quarter million dollar armored vehicle to the town. This very small town does not have need for a vehicle like that. And of course, that was something that this Marine Corps colonel retired, pointed out at the meeting. A lot of at residents of the area were very angry about this. Why are we militarizing the police? He was very concerned about that. We have an article up today on Infowars.com. I see something, and that's the Marine Corps colonel. He has a blog. It's uh, OneManMarch.com. We're going to be playing the interview that Alex had with him in the studio beginning in the next segment. But I just wanted to point out what happened in the aftermath of this. Now, they had several angry town council meetings where people were speaking out about the militarization of the police. They delayed it several times. Then eventually what they did was they decided 11 to 4 in the town council to take this Bearcat, saying, you know, basically this is free. Well, so was the Trojan horse. And just like the Trojan horse brought in danger into the city, I believe that these militarized police vehicles that Department of Homeland Security is handing out like candy to all these different police departments is really kind of a Trojan horse in a psychological war. A psychological war that is primarily aimed not even so much at the citizens at this point, but at the police, training them to think of themselves as being in a war zone, that the civilians are somebody that they need to control, somebody that is a direct threat to them. We see this happening all the time. Just yesterday, they were talking about how sovereign citizens are now the number one threat, according to the FBI, far more than Muslim terrorists. And we've seen this over and over again. You know, I saw something along with Joe Biggs when we went to the facility, the asymmetric warfare facility at AP Hill in Virginia. We saw what they're training for. This Marine colonel who was in Fallujah saw what they were training for. When they spoke out about it, they had eight people who were up for re-election last November for that city council. Now, incumbents usually get elected even unopposed. But when they're opposed, they've had uh, in the 2011 elections, they only had four contested races, and incumbents won every single one of those. Now, after they gave this bear cat to the police department, and after that became an issue, people stood up, they opposed these councilmen, and in three out of five of the contested races, the people who had voted for this bear cat were thrown out. We need to look at what is happening in our country. That's the point of his article. Now, when you look at this article we have up on Infowars.com, I see something. There's actually an article there where he's talking about his perspective, saying we need to look at the corruption. We need to open our eyes, and then we need to do something about it. It's got to come from us at the grassroots level. Now, he talks about a lot of different things in this interview. We're going to run it for the entire hour when it comes up. So you don't want to miss that. But it, it's something that we see over and over again. And I tell you, when Joe Biggs and I were walking through that asymmetric warfare center, seeing how our army is training for it, it was, it was very eerie. Walking through that empty town, an exact replica of an American small town, even with the working traffic lights. And that was what was kind of eerie. It was like you expect to see somebody and you're looking and you don't see anyone. It's a ghost town. It was like a town after a pandemic, uh, like something out of a movie, like Omega Man, where you're the last man on earth. That was strange enough. That was unsettling enough. But to know what this facility has been constructed for, because we've covered this in so many different ways. It's not just the militarized vehicles that they're giving to the police departments. It's not just the billions of rounds of ammunition. It is so many things, as well as their war gaming scenarios. They're upfront about it, and they're training for it in facilities like that, and the Marines train for it at Camp Lejeune. They have a more rural setting. So stay with us. 
right after the break, we're going to have a Marine Corps colonel who points out that this is training for warfare against Americans. Stay with us. This is Leanne McAdoo for InfoWarsLife.com. I'm here with Dr. Edward Group, master herbologist and chief formulator behind the InfoWars Life products. Dr. Group, what have you been hearing from women who've started taking super female vitality? You know, we've heard the reviews and feedback from super male vitality from emails to even excited callers on the radio. Now, the answer for women is here. A new formulation specifically designed for the female body, super female vitality, delivers 10 key herbs that work synergistically to revitalize the unique biology of women. I'm so glad that you guys made this for women. When he brought me home the bottle of Super Female, I had tons of energy, tons of motivation, a lot of drive. My husband thinks I've been in a better mood. Our relationship, all I can say is it's a lot better now. I've just started taking Super Female Vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. Supplies are limited, so secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or dial 1-888-253-3139. Quantitative easing, unemployment at depression levels, Europe financial system falling apart, China getting out of U.S. treasuries. At the end of 2008, the time of TARP, the national debt was at 11 trillion gold, trading around $850 per ounce. Close to 2012, the national debt exceeded 16.4 trillion, gold doubled to $1,600 per ounce. The 20 trillion threshold for the national debt is inevitable. Politicians in Washington have a ferocious appetite for spending and stimulus. What's worse, a printing press to finance. A hundred years ago, we had a gold standard to limit this madness, but now you have to adopt your own gold standard. Don't be fooled with paper promises. Get Midas Resources 10 Reasons to Buy Gold free by calling 800-686-2237. Understanding the gold and silver market may be the only insurance you could have to avoiding the next economic crisis. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order your free copy. Again, that's 800-686-2237. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. Now, it was about a year ago, it was on August 15th, 2013, that a former Marine Corps colonel in New Hampshire, retired, spoke out about the militarization of the police in a small New Hampshire town, saying we don't need these massive vehicles. He said, we are building an army, a domestic army over here, and I can't believe that people aren't seeing it. Is everybody blind? We wanted to have him in here to explain further, and so Alex had him in for an interview. We've got that up on Infowars.com in an article, I See Something, Marine Colonel Warns of Takeover. We have this video interview up there in case you want to pass this around to others. We wanted to play it for you on the radio. Here's that interview with Alex Jones. It was back in 2013, in August, or a little less than a year ago, that uh, there was a video posted of a Marine Corps colonel who's also an advisor to the Army, a veteran of the Iraq Wars, you name it, speaking out at a city council, warning them that military equipment and training was being prepositioned around the country by Homeland Security, and that it was pointed at the American people. Well, in the last year since he talked about that, we have seen thousands of headlines, literally dozens a week, like this one from the London Guardian, Pentagon preparing for mass civil unrest, social breakdown. 
Here's another one. The cost of the American police state. Battlefield USA. Trillions in the last 20 years spent building up this giant domestic apparatus. Hundreds of billions just the last five years. It is simply incredible. That's from the ACLU study. So we're really honored today to have Pete Martino in studio with us for this special report. We appreciate his courage because obviously the establishment has criticized him for talking about the 10 trillion pound elephant in the living room or the fact that the emperor is not wearing any clothes. Uh, he is a retired colonel in the uh, U.S. Uh, Marine Corps Reserves now. He's commanded an infantry platoon, company, and battalion and has been the senior U.S. advisor to an Iraqi army brigade. And he got a bronze star for some of the operations he was involved in in Numania, Iraq. So after more than 10 months of trying to get him in studio, we've got Colonel Martino right here with us. Colonel, great to have you here with us. Thanks, Alex. Just call me Pete. I'm a civilian now. Uh, well, one of the things I'd like to say uh, first off is I had a very highly educated Iraqi tell me one time that the way to solve the IED problem over there was the first time you have an attack, take a look around, find the closest house, go knock on the door, tell those folks you got one hour to pack and get out and then blow up their house. And the logic there is, next time, pay attention to what goes on in front of your house. And I think that's the mindset in a lot of the world. And one of the messages I think that should come out of that to the American people is, the reason so many people in the world want to kill us is because we need to pay attention to what's going on in our own house. And when it comes to these bear cats and this issue, to be honest with you, I really don't have a problem with the police having bear cats, if it's to keep me safe and to keep police officers safe. Uh, in fact, I know about a dozen police officers personally in New Hampshire who, if they were the ones holding the key, they could park it in my driveway and I'd sleep better at night. But the reality is, I don't know all the people who have the keys to those bear cats. And the thing that concerned me in Concord last year was that the chief of police justified on his grant application for that Bearcat as one of the reasons was to deal with the daily challenges of the Free State Project. Now, the Free State Project is just a, a group of uh, liberty-minded individuals, activists, who are trying to get 20,000 people, activists, to move to New Hampshire because it's a small state and try to restore liberty there and return to constitutional government. Uh, about a dozen of them are already uh, state representatives there. And they're saying we need armored vehicles uh, that have been used in Iraq because of the Free State Project peacefully and politically, their symbols, the porcupine, doesn't attack anybody, but it'll defend itself, want to try to vote for more freedom, so we need armored vehicles. Exactly, and I think some of them are a little bit out there as far as some of their tactics. Uh, I know some of them are out there maybe ticking off a lot of the police, and I think they should knock it off because it's not the police that are really the problem. It's, it's some of the leadership, and it's the laws themselves. Uh, one of the Free State Project members actually uh, reminded everybody that New Hampshire has an open carry law. And he reminded everybody by walking down the street in Manchester, New Hampshire, downtown, and was stopped by the police and detained for a while until finally people realized that it's not an illegal act to walk down the street open carrying. And since then, now you can see people open carrying. So if we don't remind people of our freedoms, people forget we have them. And I agree. That's the cutting edge of the true civil rights movement is open carry and things like that because a right not exercised is dead. But Colonel, I want to go back uh, to that city council meeting and play a few clips right now. What's happening here is we're building a domestic military because it's unlawful or unconstitutional to use American troops on American soil. So what we're doing is we're building a military. My best friend, who's a SWAT officer in Nashua, who came to Iraq with me to train the Iraqi police, sent me an email with a picture of him in the media on the streets of Watertown, Mass, wearing the exact same combat gear that we had in Iraq, only it was a different color. And what, the way we do things in the military is called task organization. You take a command, and then you attach units to it in order to accomplish the mission. What's happening is Homeland Security is pre-staging gear, equipment, consistent. And so what we're doing here, and let's not kid about it, we're building a domestic army and we're shrinking the military because the government is afraid of its own citizens. We're building an army over here and I can't believe that people aren't seeing it. Is everybody blind? That's all I'll take. Care.
I understand.